Hey everyone, it's Nelson Miller with PA Creative. I'm back with another lesson in our free mini course on making Divi responsive. So in this particular video, we're gonna be looking at the visibility settings. So some of the visibility settings allow you to actually show or hide the entire row or section or module on you know, tablet, desktop, or phone. And we're gonna show you how to do that and how not to do that. Uh, we're going to also look at some of the overflow settings. Um, so that's all in this lesson. Let's get started and learn together. So in the advanced tab of any of our section, rows, modules, columns, everything like that, we have a setting called visibility. So here it is. And underneath that, you have something that says disable on. And now we're not, we're not finding an icon. We don't need the, the icon that we normally open for the tabs but instead we just have the check mark. So if I want to disable, well, I'm in a row right now, so if I say, um, no, let's do desktop. See, I have it, that it grays out. So that's not going to show at all on desktop. Um, and then you could, you know, obviously change this based on whatever you want to do here. So that's, that's this if you want, like, I don't want this section of, of blurbs to show on my phone. So if I do that and then go check phone, you won't even see this whole row. It'll be completely disabled. So that's, that's I feel like is a responsive setting. I think that's why they've added that. Now, if I wanted to get to this quicker and I was just, let's just say I'm editing here and I right click on anywhere on here, um, you'll see it says disable, click that. And then again, I could choose that one. You'll see the ones that are green are normal and then any that are red are disabled. Okay, so that's just a quick way of getting to that setting. So why would you use those settings? Why would you disable something? Well, um, this feature is great if you wanna slim down your content that you're showing on mobile. Let's say you have a huge page and you have a lot of content, but on mobile you want the user, you know, you just want them to go right to the button and contact you or call you without a lot of extra hassle. So, you know, depending on this scenario, that might be nice. You might, you know, hide certain modules that are not relevant for those devices. Now, a lot of people I hear are using this feature um, in a way that I don't know if it's intended or if it's in, it just doesn't seem like good practice, but they're using it to duplicate stuff. So, so ignore the fact that these blurbs look different, but I have blur one and blurb two. Let's say on mobile, do you see how it stacks on mobile? One will be on top, right? So anything on the left side will becomes on top. Okay, well, let's say the person really, really wants those switched on mobile. And I can see why, especially if you're, um, if you have, like in this case, you want the headline, like, or let's say we had these switched. Let's say I kind of had it laid out like that. And by default, this text here is going to stack on top of this text and you don't want that. So what I see people doing is they'll duplicate it. Then they'll go into this first one and they'll say, well, I want to disable this on phone. And then they'll go into the second one and say, okay, now I need to disable the second one on desktop and tablet. And what they're trying to say is they'll switch this. I'll go in here and switch the columns just to get it to stack right. Okay, so now we have the headline on top and the text on the bottom. This is grayed out. You won't see that once we exit the builder here. That's just not good practice. It, you're, you're doubling the amount of code that you're adding to the page. You're doubling the amount of resources that the website needs to load. And even though they're hidden, they're still loading, okay? These are being hidden by CSS and that's too much to explain right now, but basically it's still loading. It's just not something I recommend. Um, it's better to use CSS to hide or show um, the stacking order. And in fact, our plugin, which I know I keep mentioning, but we have column stacking built right into it. You literally just turn that on and then over in the builder. Okay, so I've refreshed now. If I go in here to the row, go into the row settings, and I can turn on column stacking, right? And I could enable it. Um, you know, let's say I want it just on mobile. And then, so what I want to do here, I want to switch these 
So I go in here to the columns, go to column one to the advanced tab again and say, well, I want this to be two. And you see what happened there, it, come, it switched. So that's a extremely handy feature of our plugin and that will keep you from needing to just duplicate content, which just doesn't seem right. So another set of advanced features that we find in that visibility toggle that we were showing you earlier over in here, so in any of these, is the overflow. So it's horizontal overflow and vertical overflow. Um, the, the CSS, these are CSS properties. So like the overflow property in general controls what happens when the content is too big to fit into something. So the, this overflow property specifies like the where it clips the content and it determines whether it should add scroll bars like because if the content's too big it has you know what happens to it um, to fit into an area so you know you can see that both of these have visible scroll hidden and auto these are just CSS properties that you know the web is based on so anyway um, let's let's just show you an example of what I mean by that all right, so let's say I duplicate some of this text here, and I'll show you what I'm doing here. So I have a bunch of text here, but I don't like how long it is. Let's say I went into my row, and I said I want a, you know, a max height of two, 200 pixels or whatever it is. Doesn't doesn't matter. Something, something like that. Okay. So then when, you know, that 200 pixels would be really small. So let's go in here and say to the visibility and say, well, I want the vertical overflow to be auto. And by auto, it's, it's automatically making a scroll bar, which you can see right there. Okay. So remember, I made the row a max height of like whatever, 200 pixels or something. So then it doesn't know what to do. So the overflow setting is telling it to be auto. And auto is saying if it needs it, add a scroll bar. You could specifically say scroll, or you could say hidden. But why would you say hidden? Because it would just be hidden. Um, but you kind of get the idea here. And this is something that you can change for devices. So that's why we're talking about it in this course. So the vertical overflow, you know maybe on phone i don't want this because i don't want the user to be like scrolling down the page with their finger right and then they get to this and they start scrolling accidentally so let's say on phone i want it to be visible yeah i want it to just be visible of course we don't want that on anymore okay so there you go now if i had this you know what scroll i guess it would be scroll and it even has horizontal scroll added because it's just not fitting so it don't know what to do and you've tell, told it to add scroll so anyway you have it on visible on phone and then scroll on desktop so that's an example how you would use the overflow feature for making Divi responsive okay so that's a quick look at the visibility settings in Divi and again some of these in the advanced tab are not as common as those in the design tab or the content tab but I think you're going to encounter use cases for some of these um, as you go along and as you're making your sites responsive. So there you go. All right. Well, we'll see you in the next lesson.